Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this video lecture on computer system architecture. In this video, we will cover different instruction formats. I am Muhammad Iqbal Bhatt. Let us start. First, let us have a look at the topics that we are going to cover in this video. We will start with instruction format. What is instruction format and what is included in the instruction format? Then we will cover some issues that are related to design of an instruction format. And then in between these design issues, we will cover instruction types based on number of operands. And for example, we have zero address instructions, two address instructions, three address instructions. So we will cover these instruction types. What is an instruction format? Uh, you are aware that the main purpose of the processor is to execute different kinds of instructions. And these instructions are called machine instructions or computer instructions. These instructions determine the kind of operation that will be performed by the processor. But inside processor, these instructions are represented by a sequence of bits. If we analyze these instructions at the processor level, we get a sequence of bits. For example, if we have an assembly language instruction, load accumulator 01. This is an instruction that will load the accumulator register with 01 or we can say that it will initialize accumulator register with 1. When this instruction is assembled, it is converted into the machine code and inside this machine code we get a sequence of zeros and ones, a sequence of bits. These are the bits that represent this instruction inside the processor and these sequence of bits are divided into different components and each component represents a different part of the instruction. So what are the different components inside this instruction? Which parts determine which things? Let us see that. An instruction format must include these components. The first one is opcode, the operation that this instruction is going to perform. This opcode specifies the operation that the computer will be performing. For example, if I want to perform an addition of two numbers, then the opcode will be add or something like that. Similarly, if I want to perform subtraction, multiplication, division, movement, shift or any other operation inside the processor, each operation is represented by a specific code that is called opcode. And I have to dedicate some bits for these opcodes. Depending upon the number of opcodes, I have to specify the number of bits accordingly inside this instruction format. The second important part inside this instruction is the address part. This field designates a memory address or a processor register. And these addresses are for the operands on which this operation is to be performed. So these addresses represent different kinds of operands, both source operands as well as destination operands. So for example, if I want to perform operation add, then I need two numbers to perform addition. So I have to designate the address of those two operands inside this address field. And when that addition operation will be performed, the result must be stored somewhere. The addition result uh, must be stored somewhere inside the memory or inside some register. That address 
must also be included in this instruction either explicitly or implicitly. What is the meaning of explicit and implicit? Either we have to write the address of the destination register or memory address inside this instruction or the opcode itself will determine where the result should be stored that is implicit. So in that case we need not to mention the destination address inside this instruction. The third important component inside this instruction format is the mode bit that specifies the way effective address is determined. Effective address is the final physical address of the operands and inside the instruction we may use some addressing scheme to determine the address uh, effective address of the operand but the kind of instruction and the kind of addressing mode we determine where that operand is stored whether that is stored inside the register inside the memory inside the memory directly or indirectly or we are using some other addressing scheme so this mode determines the kind of addressing mode this addressing mode can either be specified explicitly using some bit or it can be implicit inside the opcode so we can create opcodes that determine the kind of mode bit that determine the kind of addressing mode or we can explicitly specific, specific, specify this inside a bit and that bit will determine what is the addressing mode. For example, if we use a single bit to determine the addressing mode, direct or indirect, so if the value of this mode bit is zero, we may consider that the addressing mode is direct. And if the value of this addressing bit is one, then we may the, or the processor may use that the addressing mode is indirect. So these are the basic three components of an instruction format. So inside an instruction we have to reserve some bits for opcode the operation to perform. We have to specify some bits for the address that determines the address of the operands on which the operation is to be performed and the address of the destination uh, memory location. Similarly, we have to reserve some bits for the mode that determines the kind of addressing mode that this instruction is using. So we can say that this instruction format is a kind of layout that defines the bits allocated to these different elements of an instruction. So there are different elements of an instruction, opcode, address, mode and the instruction format determines the layout, the way these bits are specified, the way these bits are put inside this instruction is determined by the layout and that layout is called instruction format. Now let us consider some design issues that we encounter while designing an instruction. The design of an instruction format, it is a complex art and a variety of design, uh, instruction designs have been implemented. Let us see some of the key issues that are encountered while designing an instruction. So, designing of an instruction, it is an architectural issue. So, architectural, we have two kinds of issues inside these processor designing. One are called organizational issues that are specific to some kind of technology and some are called architectural issues that lost for decades and architecture lost for decades but an organization may change frequently with the changing technology and this instruction format it is an architectural issue so this means a specific kind of instruction format will have an impact on a number of years 
of the design of that instruction format. So it will have an impact over decades on the processors that are using that kind of instruction format. There are three main issues that we are going to discuss in this video. First is instruction length. So while designing an instruction, what should be the length of an instruction? Whether it should be a small instruction length, instruction or a very large instruction. Uh, can we use a 16-bit instruction or a 32-bit instruction or a 64-bit instruction? What are the implications of using a longer instruction format on the processor speed and uh, on the processor uh, performance? Next is allocation of bits. Once we have determined that this instruction is going to be of that length, then we have to allocate these bits to different portions of that instruction. As we discussed a few minutes ago that the instruction contains different components. We have to allocate these bits for these components. How much bits to reserve for opcode, how much for the address fields and how much bits to reserve for the addressing modes. Then the third important design issue is whether we go with a fixed length instruction format or a variable length instruction format. So these are the main three design issues. Let us have a look at these issues one by one. The first is instruction length. It is the basic issue of uh, instruction format design. So it determines two important features of the processors richness and flexibility. The more the length of an instruction, the more opcodes can be accom accommodated, the more number of addressing modes can be accommodated. So the instruction set of that particular kind of processor will be very rich. We will have a large number of instructions with a very large number of addressing modes. Similarly, when we have more number of instructions and more number of addressing modes, it will be very flexible. So this flexibility is from the programmer's perspective. The programmers will see this kind of processor having a very large instruction length, very flexible because they will be provided with a large number of opcodes and a large number of addressing modes. So that will make their programming very easy. They can use complex addressing modes to minimize their size of programs. Now let us compare what is the difference between a smaller instruction format and a bigger instruction format. If we have a smaller instruction format, obviously it will occupy less space and if we have a big instruction or a large instruction, it will definitely occupy more space. Both inside the processor registers, we have to reserve large uh, registers for the, these instructions and inside the memory, we have to reserve more in uh, reg memory for these larger instructions. And if we have smaller instruction, so definitely there will, there will be smaller number of bits reserved for opcodes. When there will be smaller number of bits reserved for opcodes, we will definitely have less number of opcodes. So this processor will be having less number of operations, operation codes. And definitely for the operands, we will again have very less number of uh, uh, bits reserved for different kinds of operands. So this will not be having very rich uh, instruction set and addressing modes. But on the other hand, if we have a big instruction or a large instruction, we have more opcodes and more operands. We have more space for more operands. So this will be favorable for the programmers. We will have more operation codes. When more operation codes, that means that processor will be capable to perform more kind of operations. Few addressing modes. When we have smaller instructions and definitely the uh, operands will be 
provided less number of bits so when they have less number of bits we have fewer number of addressing modes but on the other hand if we have a large instruction we have more bits reserved for the operands when there are more bits reserved for operands we can have more number of addressing modes and complex number of addressing modes that is desirable from programmer's perspective so now we can say that a smaller instruction format is designer friendly the designer who is designing this processor it is designer friendly because he has to specify he has to reserve less number of bits for opcodes so less number of opcodes he has to reserve less number of bits for operands so there will be lesser complexity in this processor so it is designer friendly but if an instruction is very large it will have large number of opcodes it will have large number of addressing modes the complexity of that processor will be very high so it will be programmer friendly the programmer will get large number of opcodes he will get large number of addressing modes so it will be programmer friendly but from the designer's perspective this processor having large number of instructions or lengthy instructions will be very complex it will be very complex to design that processor so while designing an instruction the designer has to take a uh, trade off between these two parameters whether to go with a smaller instruction or a bigger instruction so he has to take a trade off where he will get optimum number of opcodes and optimum number of addressing modes so that it is programmer friendly as well as designer friendly so in most of the processors we are having 16 or 32 bit instructions now what are the factors that decide size of the instruction how do we decide what should be the size of that instruction whether we should go with 10 bit 12 bit 16 bit 32 bit 64 bit instruction or a 128 or 256 bit instruction so there are some factors that the designer has to consider while taking the instruction length the first one is memory size how much memory we have to access if we have to access a very large memory then definitely we require more number of bits to address that memory so the instruction length should be large so this is the first factor if we have very small memory then we require very less number of bits to address that uh, memory so definitely we can go with smaller instruction length the second is memory organization in memory organization we have to consider whether we are using only memory for storing different kinds of programs or we are using virtual mem memory as well and if we are using virtual memory that gives the programmer an illusion that he is having more memory more address space than the physical memory that is available inside the processor in that case we need to reserve more number of bits for this virtual memory so memory organization is one more factor that we have to consider then we have memory transfer length the memory the data is stored inside the ram and from that ram it is transferred into the processor registers for different kinds of processing how is that data transferred into the processor registers whether we are transferring that data in bytes in bits or in 22 bytes that is called half word 16 bits or in words that is called 32 bit or double word how that memory is how that that data is transferred from memory into the processor that is called a transfer length and we have to uh, specify instructions accordingly we have to set the size of the instruction accordingly so if we are transferring data in the form of bytes so this means the instruction length the length specified for an address inside the memory should be reserved accordingly 
but if we are transferring data in the form of words this means eight, uh, four bytes are transferred at a time so then we require less number of bits inside the instruction so memory transfer is one more factor that decides the size of the instruction then the memory transfer rate what is the rate at which data is transferred from the memory into the processor if uh, we know that processor is much more faster than the uh, memory so if the data that is being transferred from the memory into the processor is slow and the rate uh, is slow then it is uh, there is uh, no fun to reserve more number of bits inside the instruction for memory references since the data at which this data will be transferred the rate at which this data will be transferred into the processor is slower so we have to set the instruction length accordingly so this was the first design issue while designing an instruction we have to consider these different factors what the memory size organization transfer length and the transfer rate so while considering we have to uh, take a trade-off between these different kinds of uh, factors and then come up with the instruction length so the instruction length of a particular processor is not determined at random there are a large number of factors that determine what should be the length of that instruction now the second factor that is the design issue that is the allocation of bits now we have decided that we are going to go with 16 bit instruction or an instruction of this kind of length whether a small or a large instruction now we have to decide how to allocate these different bits to different portions of the instruction we have to keep a balance between uh, the number of opcodes and the addressing fields so if we allocate more number of bits for opcodes so for example if, if we have a 16 bit instruction and out of these 16 bits we dedicate 10 bits for the opcodes so definitely we will be having to raise power 10 that is 1024 number of instructions opcodes but for the address field we will have only 6 bits so to this power 6 we will have only 6 bits reserved for the addressing fields so we will be having less number of addressing fields similarly if we uh, dedicate more number of bits for address fields then we will be having less number of opcodes so we have to keep a balance between the opcodes and the addressing fields so keeping in view the richness and the flexibility of the processor how much rich we want this processor to be or how much flexible from programmers perspective we want this processor to be we have to keep a balance between these two factors so for example if we have more opcodes so this means definitely more bits for opcodes then there will be less number of bits for address fields but if we have more number of bits reserved for address fields so we will have more number of address fields more number of addressing modes but we will be having less number of opcodes we have to keep a track between we have to keep a balance between these two factors and these are these are determined by the number of uh, factors for example how much operation is that uh, we want this processor to perform so we have to reserve the uh, bits for our code accordingly how much fear how many number of addressing fields that we want inside an instruction so we will have to decide accordingly and similarly how many kinds of addressing modes we want inside a processor then we have to determine accordingly so there is a trade uh, uh, again uh, we have to keep a balance between these two factors so this is another design issue so now there are some factors that determine that decide the selection of addressing bits so there are some uh, factors that determine how much bit should be allocated to the addressing fields so what are these first number of operands so sometimes an addressing mode can be indicated implicitly so if an addressing mode can be indicated implicitly then we do not require to reserve bits for those kinds of operands 
so we will have less number of bits for that so sometimes we need to keep these explicit so how many operands you are using inside an instruction will determine the number of bits that need to be reserved for the addressing fields so we have different uh, kinds of instructions some having uh, two number of uh, uh, addressing uh, fields two number of uh, operands some having three or some having two or some having zero accordingly we have to reserve allocate the bits for the addressing fields second is whether we want to go with a register addressing mode or memory addressing mode so uh, registers are the fastest elements inside m processor and a machine must have registers so that we can process data inside the processor so there are some processors that uh, use that are having more number of registers for example some uh, typical uh, contemporary processors are having 32 number of registers and we can use these registers inside our instruction if we use more number of uh, registers if we use these registers we need less number of bits to allocate for these registers so for example if we have um, 16 uh, number of registers so then we just need four bits to identify those 16 registers inside an instruction so we need only four bits allocated for these registers inside the addressing field as opposed to the memory addresses which are very large yeah, and memory is always in uh, mbs or gbs and especially nowadays in gbs so to address a memory address to reference a memory address inside an instruction we need to allocate more number of bits but if we are referencing registers if we are having instructions that are register centric that are mostly using registers inside the addressing field then we need to allocate less number of bits for that and accordingly uh, register sets some uh, processors are having a single register set a single register set with for example 16 registers or 32 registers and some processors even have more number of register sets they have two or three register sets and these again registers require less number of bits inside a processor so inside an instruction so that requires less number of bits for the addressing field and then the range of addresses for addresses that reference memory the range of addresses that can be referenced is related to the number of address bits so if we are accessing a 1 mb uh, memory so our range will be from 0 to 2 raised power 20 so then we need 20 bits to address this 1 mb memory but if we are having 1 gb memory then we need 30 bits for uh, addressing of uh, part similarly if we are having uh, ram in uh, more than two gbs or uh, in terabytes then we will accordingly need to reserve bits inside the uh, instruction format so we need to allocate more number of bits for these addressing part so the range of addresses is another factor and then the granularity of the addresses so in a system with 16 or 32 bit words an address can reference a word or a byte at a designer's choice so byte addressing is convenient for character manipulation but requires for a fixed memory more address bits so granular granularity determines how are we addressing this memory whether in bytes or in half words so that will also determine how many bits need to be allocated for these addressing fields now let us cover these, uh, this first part number of operands depending upon the number of operands we have different kinds of instructions so instruction types based on number of operands so how many operands are available will determine the size of the instruction 
So if we are having three operands, then we need to reserve bits inside an instruction for three different operands. So that will be a lengthy instruction. So instruction, there are different types of instructions. So first one is three address operands. Uh, instructions, three operand instructions. We have some processors that allow for three operands inside an instruction. So here, for example, we are having sub uh, sub this is the opcode subtract and then we are having three operands. So we have sub y a b the first part is opcode that determines the operation the then we have address fields there are three address fields given inside this instruction these two a and b determine the source operands on which the subtraction is to be performed and this y determines the destination operand in which the result will be stored. So the instruction can be translated as y equal to a minus b. So the operation a minus b will be performed and the result will be stored inside the y operand. So in this three operand instruction, we reserve three parts for different operands to for the operands uh, and source operands and one for the destination. So if we have this kind of instruction, then definitely we require more number of bits for these operands. So for example, if each operand requires 16 bits, then what should be the length of this instruction? For example, 3 bits for operand, 6 bits, 8 bits for first uh, destination operand, and 8, 8 bits for the source operands. So we require 24 bits for these three operands and 3 bits for this. So we have 27. We require at least 27 bits for this instruction. We cannot have an instruction less than this 27 bit uh, length. So if we have more number of operands inside an instruction, then definitely we require more number of bits. So similarly, we have multiplication, MPY, we have three operands, D and E will be executed, D and E will be performed the operation, these are the source operands and the result will be stored inside this T, uh, T operand. Then we have some instructions that have two operands, those are called two operand uh, instructions. So in these instructions the destination uh, operand is implicit so that means we do not mention the destination or we do not reserve the bits for the destination operand one of the operand that is given inside the instruction will be used for the destination or the destination for the saving the result so for example if we have this instruction move y comma a so here we are having only two operands one is y another is a the operation that will be performed the result of a will be transferred into y so y is a is the source operand and the result will be stored inside y that is the destination operand or for example if we have subtract y comma b here y minus b will be performed but where will be the result stored we have mentioned that uh, we have not mentioned that the result will be stored inside this first operand that is implicit that you have to store the result inside y so this means it will overwrite the result of this y uh, operand if we are having some uh, data inside this y operand it will be overwrite so this is three ad uh, two address uh, instructions or two operand instructions definitely 
in two address operand uh, in instructions we require more number of operations to perform a specific kind of uh, operation in three address in a uh, instruction since we are specifying the destination inside the instruction and we are having to separate source operands then this will have lesser number of uh, instructions to execute a particular kind of program but two address operands require more number of uh, operations then we have one operand instructions and an instruction having a single operand specified inside the instruction so what is this single operand instruction so in single in uh, operand instruction the one of the operands is implicit so these are also called accumulator instructions where uh, one of the registers or one of the operands is stored inside the accumulator it is implicit that you have one operand stored inside the accumulator accumulator is a register inside the processor a specific uh, general purpose register that always stores one operand and also the result so for example if we have this instruction add and then after add we are having a so where is the source operand where are the two operands we have to perform add and addition requires two operands so we have only and mentioned one a so this means one operand is implicit this will perform the operation ax ax is the accumulator so it will perform the addition of this operand a for example with the accumulator register now where is the destination operand where the result will be stored it is again this accumulator the result will be stored inside this accumulator so in one address in instruction we only mention one operand the other operand is implicit and that implicit uh, operand is stored inside the accumulator register again the result that uh, the destination operand is again this implicit accumulator register so these are one operand instructions and if we are having one operand instruction then definitely we require less number of bits for these operands so we require lesser number of bits for these operands so this will be a shorter instruction but definitely inside these one operand instructions if we have to perform a, a specific kind of uh, operation then we require more number of instructions and further we can go there are instructions that are called zero operand instructions where we only mention operations what operation to perform where are the operands stored they are implicitly stored inside a stack a stack is a special kind of data structure that works on the principle of lifo lifo means last in first out so if we have a stack like this and we store a number for example 2 inside it it will be stored if we again want to store another item for example 3 inside it it will be stored on top of this number so in stack the operation to store and retrieve the data is determined by the, this LIFO principle the item that goes first is stored at the bottom and the item that goes last is stored at the top that is called the top of the stack and we can only retrieve the data that is at the top of the stack so for example if we want to retrieve some item from the stack that item that is at the top of the stack is 3 we will get 3 
so this three is the item that was last stored inside this stack and is the first that will come out of this stack that is called a last in first out so in zero operand instructions the operands are stored inside a stack <coughs> so how do we perform the operation so for example if we have to perform add we just mention add inside the instruction without specifying any kind of the operand the operands are implicit inside the stack the processor will move the first item from the stack that is 3 then since this is an add it requires two operands then it will move the next operand that is 2 and it will perform the addition of these two operands 3 plus 2 is 5 and that 5 again will be stored inside this stack so it will remove 3 then 2 the stack will be empty then it will store the result 5 inside this stack so in zero operand instructions the source and destination operands are implicit inside the stack so these are called zero operand instructions so instruction uh, length or the allocation of bits will be determined depending upon the type of instruction that we are using if you are we are using a zero operand instruction though definitely we do not need to reserve bits for the operands because they are implicit so we can have more number of opcodes definitely uh, and if we want to go with one operand instruction then we need to reserve address bits for one operand and if we go for two operand instruction we need to reserve addresses for two operands and for the three operand instruction we need to reserve addresses for three operands so definitely we need to allocate more number of bits for the operands <coughs> so these are the instruction types based on number of operands Then the last uh, uh, issue that is whether to go with a fixed or a variable length instruction. So we have processors that were having fixed number length instruction. So if uh, the length of an instruction is 16 bit, then we go with only this kind of instruction a 16 bit instruction but there are some processors that go with variable length instructions so we have variable length instruction but there is a uh, comparison there is a difference between these two kinds of uh, uh, instruction formats so if we have a fixed length instruction so there will be simple instruction fetch process since we are we know in advance the number of bits reserved for the uh, instruction so we have simple fetch fetch means to get the instruction from memory and load it inside the instruction uh, register of the processor so we know in advance the length of the instruction so the fetch fetch process will be very simple but if we have a variable length instruction then the instruction process will be complex because we have to determine the number of bits that have been allocated for the instruction so this is a variable length instruction we don't know number what is the length of this instruction the instruction fetch will be a bit complex so in case of fixed length we have uh, we know the length of the instruction in advance but in case of variable length we don't know what is the length of the instruction so we need to know what is the length of the instruction that have been used in a specific case so this is not known uh, in advance so this is a rigid scheme rigid scheme means the length of the instruction is uh, fixed so it is rigid you cannot go with any kind of other kind of instruction length or we cannot uh, change 
the scheme for number of bits that have been reserved for operands or for opcodes. So this is a rigid, this is not flexible. But variable length is a flexible format since we can have variable length in instruction format. For some instructions, we will reserve more number of bits for the addressing fields and for some other instructions, we will reserve less number of bits for the addressing fields. And uh, accordingly, uh, similarly, we can reserve more number of bits for operands, opcodes, for operations, and for some other cases, we can reserve more number of bits for the opcodes. So this is flexible. Here in the fixed case, we have small number of operations because the opcode size is fixed. We cannot change it. If we have reserved four bits for the opcodes, we will at most have to raise power four. Uh, I mean 16 operations. We cannot go for more number of operations. But in case of variable length, depending upon the uh, situation, we can change the number of bits that have been reserved for the opcodes. If we have reserved four bits for opcodes, we will have 16 uh, instructions opcodes. But in some cases, if we uh, feel that we need to address less number of uh, memory locations, we can reserve more number of bits for the opcodes. So we will have large number of operations. So this is another factor that we have to check. But uh, in case of variable length, the principal price to pay for variable length in instructions is an increase in the complexity of the processor. The pro complexity of processor in this case will be very high. Since it is a variable length, we have to uh, set the processing or the machinery or the digital equipment accordingly to cope up with this variable length in instruction format. It will be very complex, but this one will be very uh, simple. So these were uh, the different kinds of instruction formats and uh, different issues that we have to deal while uh, designing an instruction and the types of different kinds of instruction depending upon the number of operands. Hope you got the concept. Thanks for watching this video.